Hello and welcome to this chapter. In this chapter, we will learn the relevant knowledge of data temporary storage and data rendering, mainly to solve how to store and process data in the front end and how to combine data with our UI. The use of data temporary storage, data processing, and data rendering directly determines the depth and breadth of your editor. Let's start to learn the first section without saying much. Let's start to learn the first section without saying much. In this section, we will learn the knowledge related to data variables. This section mainly includes the following knowledge points. First, we will talk about what our data variables are and what characteristics they have. Finally, we will talk about an addition method of data variables. First, let's talk about an overview of data variables. Variables come from our mathematics and our abstract concepts that can store calculation results or represent values in computer language. Variables can be understood as a data storage unit. Generally speaking, they are variable and are used for timely storage breaks the value of the change for another widget to make a call. We can vividly understand it as a box containing things. Its function is to temporarily store the things in it and take them at any time when necessary. Next, let's talk about some characteristics of data variables. First, each data variable has its unique variable name, which can be accessed by name. In our HeCode tool, we often access it through our formula editor, that is, the drop-down menu we see or an option box with an arrow in front. According to different declared data types, the system will automatically allocate different storage units, which can be divided into our text variables, numerical variables, Boolean variables, general variables, etc. Different variable types are used to store different data. Third, once the variable changes, it will cover the current data, and the historical data is not traceable, which is more vividly understood. In order to understand the concept of box just now, if you put new things in a box with limited space, the previous things will certainly disappear. Then we will talk about some methods of adding our data variable. The method of adding data variable is very simple. Just select our abdominal container, just select our abdominal container, and click the data variable in our widget column to complete an addition. However, we should pay attention to the fact that the variables added in the subset of our module action group are local variables, which cannot be accessed externally. The last point is that I think it is necessary to form a good habit in the big housework. All our variables must be named seriously, and if necessary, they need to be packaged with our object container. Because for the production of our entire application, the use of variables will be very large. If your variable naming is not standardized and its packaging is not standardized, then you can see your own application in the later stage or the maintenance cost will be very high with the larger and larger application. So here we show you how to add a variable. We open our editor to write an application name called our variable adding and then click our create button. The variable adding is very simple. For example, now I want to add a variable under the front end. Generally speaking, what is the variable added under the front end? It's our global variable, right? Therefore, generally speaking, I will first add one of our object containers, change its name to our global variable in the object container, and then add our variable under my object container. Where is the variable? I have introduced it to you before. If we see a series of yellow values here, they're all ours numerical variables are very simple when we want to add them. We can add them with one click. For example, such a text variable is used to store and username, and then I can double click it to change its name to our username. We must form such a habit. Whenever you want to use any variable, it must have its own mission. It must store something and transfer what it is used for. It must have a strict naming. Therefore, we must form a good habit of naming here. Secondly, we just talked about it. For example, we may have a lot of action groups here. We also add an object container and change the name here to our global action group. When we put it under the front end, we will add our global action group. Then we will add our action group here, and this action group may be it is used to deal with names. Please note that I write the names here casually. But everyone must form any widget we add, especially our action and group variables. 
we must form a good habit of naming. Then we add a text variable under our action group, which is called a temporary name here. Please note that this is just a demonstration for you. Here we add a button to trigger an event. When this button is clicked, if I want to select the name in such a global variable, I can operate on it if I select such a global variable name we can see the name in the local variable. It will tell us that the content in the local variable can only be used in one, but it won't let us make a call. Then, after we understand some basic concepts of variables, we will introduce all commonly used variables one by one from the next class. The above is all the content of this section. Thank you for watching.